Okay, so hello and welcome back to another coin video, fellow coin collectors. So on this channel, we like to talk about coins. Uh, basically, sometimes coins that you can actually make an extra cash on. But sometimes it's just collecting. And this video is just about collecting. So this coin lot cost me, I think, about 18 bucks. And as you can see, it's got all the varieties and it's all related to the Middle East. The only coin that stands out here actually there's two of them you should actually know yes we have these two coins here and that's basically just linguistic differences so all of these are pretty much in arabic this one's in hebrew and arabic and this one is in Farsi or persian with an arabic script so uh Let's go through each of these coins individually. So the first one we have is a Q81 Fields. Yes, it's not one fill, it's one Fields. They have a plural at the end of it. I'm not too sure if that's a mistake in the translation or if it's just a transliteration of the Arabic. Okay, so this is the smallest denomination issued by the actual country and it has, ooh. Okay, so what they call a dough, a type of a transport ship they use in the Persian Gulf and it's dated 1966 uh, it's nickel brass two grams uh, it has an exchange rate of half a cent and by, if you know anything about Kuwait it's a very rich country so I doubt it they very much they actually use this coin it has a mintage of half a million which is pretty standard for this type of coin uh, it hasn't been demonetized, but they, they haven't minted any since 1988. So, if you go to Kuwait, you're probably not going to get this coin. Uh, but I see they sell for about 5 bucks, which is actually quite nice. Then, the next one we have is from Egypt. And this is a 140 of a uh, piesta. So, that means it is a 1 millimeter coin so this is the start of uh, the decimalization because pretty much as one kush one piasta equals 40 para so this is a one para coin and it's a small bronze coin it has uh, the togri togra which is just the uh, Effigy, um, yeah, the written name of the monarch, which is uh, Mahmed the Fifth, uh, and it has the regal date down below. So this is regal date two. It has H for the heat and mints are minted in the UK, and on this side, we just have the Arabic inscription struck in Egypt. Uh, quarter of one tenth of a piastre and a frozen date of uh, 1327 so and ottoman coins have frozen dates and this is regular year two has a mintage of two million so not really an easy coin to get but obviously it looks to be in pretty low grade so i'd say probably five dollars for that coin okay the next two coins we have are from yemen so we have a South Arabia or South Yemen and we have North Yemen so at the time these were two individual countries so and they've been issuing coins for at least two thousand two and a half thousand years something like that uh, the old kingdoms issued their own coins a lot of those were copies of tetradrachms but they also issued uh, individual stylistic coins and when the British took over South Arabia, North Arabia was part of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, but when that disintegrated, they did issue their own coins. And South Arabia actually was divided into about four or five different states. And a lot of them issued their own coins. It's only in 1964 that they got a united currency. And this is the smallest denomination. It is a one fills coin. And they issued that along with the five, 25 and 50 fills. And as you can see, this one has the denomination English and Arabic. 
and it's aluminium it's only 0.78 grams 19.81 has a mintage of 10 million so it should be pretty easy coin to get and they sell for about five to ten dollars each and it was minted in london so that's that coin it has uh two crossed arab daggers which uh, represent the uh it's pretty common in the arabian peninsula and this one is a decimalized currency of north yemen so in 1974 they issued decimalized coins uh, so these were used in north yemen and then in 1990 they started to use them in south yemen when this currency slowly disappeared in 1994 although um i would say inflation actually removed these by that time period and they issued the one five and ten reels so uh, this is a five feels coin so there is two versions made of brass 2.86 grams 21 millimeters if it has the inscription up top of the coat of arms that is the fao version uh, the more common version doesn't have any inscription on the coat of arms side so uh, the actual mintage of this coin is 500,000 yeah and I don't see that many individual sales, so this is probably about five to ten dollars per coin. Uh, human coins are really not that popular; uh, they seem to be a bit hard to sell. Okay, the next coin we have is a current coin of the United Arab Emirates. Looks like this is a brief strike, and as you can see, it might be an error coin because of the rim damage, but it could also be. It does have circulation. It could be just damage after minting, but I don't know how they would actually do something like that. It would need to be compressed somehow. But considering this has a lot of circulation, I think it might be just post mint damage. Anyway, yes. So this is a 50 fuels coin from the UAE with all Derricks. Yeah, and probably if it's if it's an error coin, yeah, probably about five to ten bucks. If it's not an error coin, just post me damage, and it's just face value, which is probably about ten cents. Next coin we have is Israel Ten Agrot. So it's a current circulating coin. And you can get different varieties, but this one's pretty much the lowest circulating coin in circulation. Uh, it's worth about four cents. This side has an old Pluto coin. And here we have the coat of arms of Israel. In Israel in Hebrew, English, and Arabic. So I actually like the coins, the old Pruta coins. Talk about Israel. Uh, here's Palestine. So this is a currency that was used in uh, Israel, Palestine, and Jordan from 1927. And it's the smallest denomination. So this is a one mil coin. So... One pound equals a 1,000 mils. The highest coin they issued was a 100 mil coin that was in silver. So this is 3.23 grams, 21 millimeters, made in the UK. And this is the first year of issue. Yep, 1927, 10 million. And the key date that you want is the 1940, only 396,000. And Definitely 1947, in which all of them were melted down. Uh, so they should all be accounted for. If you get a 1947, it should have a provenance. So you should know who owned it before. If not, it's more likely if you're stolen or fake coin. Okay, so that is a nice coin to have. This is demonetized in 1952 and replaced. Uh... With the Israeli shekel, the Jordanian dinar, and the Egyptian pound. Okay, the next coin we have is from Oman. So Oman actually neighbours Yemen. So South Yemen specifically. This is a coin of 10 bezars. So if you don't know 
uh, Yemeni currency is one real equals 100 bezars. This is a 1975 FAO coin because uh, it's 1395 there. Now you know it's FAO. It doesn't have the coat of arms of Oman, but it has an island with uh, date palms on it and fish in the water. So this is just saying um, producing more food. This is a mintage of 1 million. And I see poor quality coins sell for about 5 to 10 bucks. This one's pretty much uncirculated, so probably at least 10 to 20 dollars, I would say. Uh, now, there is another 10 Bezars that was issued 1995. That one seems to be a lot harder to get, 20,000. This is an exchange rate of five, about 4 or 5 cents. So even in the, the 1975, it's um, had an equivalent value of about 40 cents. So that's that coin. Uh, then we have uh, a previous circulating coin of Jordan. So just remember this currency replaced this currency in Jordan, Palestinian pound. And well, this is nothing much to really get excited about. Uh, 1978, and this one had the updated effigy of Kim Hussein. So 1978 had a mintage of yeah 60 million. So this one's not really worth that much. Maybe one dollar if you're lucky. Next one we have is a 10, uh, 100 fields of Bahrain. So this one has a denomination on one side, the country's name, and on this side have the country's name, the date palm. This is 1965. Had a mintage of 8.3 million. So in this condition, yeah, probably less than five dollars. So, uh, although the highest denomination minted, currently this coin is a bimetal coin, so that one no longer circulates. Okay, talking about worthless currencies, here we have a Syrian one pound from 1968, and this is a nickel coin. It has a mintage of ten million. So, uh, you can't actually sell these. You know, you can't sell Syrian Iranian currency when I mean, you're not supposed to on eBay. So it's a bit hard to gauge what the value of this coin is in the actual market. And if you look at these coins, most of them are actually metal rotated. So you rotate it like that, and it's faces up to you. This coin's coin rotated, like the United States and uh, coins. So. An interesting thing is that Canadian coins are metal rotated, unlike the United States. So here we have the coup of arms, uh, seven half rounds. Yeah, so I would say this one's probably about five bucks, if you're lucky. Shouldn't be too hard of a coin to get. You just get them in all these coin sets here. So the last one I've got, and the one I just wanted, so this is the only one I want to keep, is a 20 reels from Iran. And... It has 20 down below. It has, it looks like a lion. Ooh, is that a lion? I don't know. And these coins of 20 reels are first issued in 1971 uh, as a copper and nickel coin. So at this, Iran hasn't issued silver coins since the 1950s. So on... This side we have the Shah Muhammad Reza Shah Pahlavi, and we have the date down below, which is uh, 1353, so that makes it 1974. There's a mintage of 12 million. Up the top, we just have the uh, monarch's name and in the country. And on this side, this is Sir or Korshid, so a lion um, holding a scarab. And this is supposed to have been around since oh, the Median Empire period, so it's actually quite an old symbol. 
the previous dynasties did use this, uh, but current Islamic Republic of Iran doesn't. They use just uh, um, the name of Allah, actually. That's all they use. So this one seems to be ghosting, just around the actual rim. Yeah, so this one's probably about 10 to $20, although you can't actually buy them on eBay. Uh, but this completes the set of Iranian coins from uh, the 1960s and 70s. Anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much. And I hope this helps you with your coin collecting. Thank you and goodbye.